I took this picture on my last evening of field work in Tanzania. I was sitting um, on a plastic chair outside my guest house, and I was trying to enjoy the last rays of sun because I couldn't, I, and I was writing on my notebook because, of course, I would have never been able to do it afterwards because the village I was in was unelectrified. And I was there trying because, you know, I knew that was my last evening. So I was there trying to capture and store inside, in the back of my head, the feeling and all the images and everything I, was cap I captured throughout the journey. And uh, the people that read at the, the luck to read the blog that I wrote uh, on the community post, um, you, you already know that I wrote stuff at the end of each day I was in the field. And um, I was, um, you know, trying to get through things by writing them down, things that I didn't understand, the new words in Kiswahili that I was learning. And, uh, and I was trying to do this every day because this really helped me. And today I want to share with you what I wrote down on my notebook that last evening. And uh, they were mainly like the takeaways um, from my whole journey. And especially a thing that I do usually, and I always look backwards and try to see where the beginning was of, my, of any journey that I do. And odd enough, on my notebook, I found the notes that I took um, the 30th of October of last year, which was um, the end of Alumni Unite. And that event for me was very important uh, because it was the first time that I contributed with something that I knew. I contributed with knowledge and I contributed with my experience and, and that was a milestone for me. But after that event, I was on the plane, I was with my notebook again and I was like, okay, now is the moment to do the exercise that I do when I'm bored, which is called the things that I know to be true. This exercise I learned from a TED talk and it basically entails listing down things that are true to you specifically in that moment. And you don't have to write a lot of complicated stuff. Whatever come up, comes up to, my, to your mind. And um, so I started my list. And I was like, my family and friends love me. Because this I know to be true. I feel their love every day. I love photography. All the ones that <laughs> follow me on Instagram probably have their Instagram flooded by my pictures. Uh, I love it. And so that's something that I know to be true. That I know that climate change is real. And I know that it's true to me. And I know that I'm an overexcitable woman that always asks too many questions, always wants to know more, and always go deeper into things. I know this about myself. And then I gave this speech about things that I knew. And then I said, OK, I need to write something about my work. But to be fair to myself, I couldn't write electrification triggers, economic and other impacts. Because in the end, it wasn't true to me. It was always true to other people that I talked to, to the literature that I read, to all my work, but it just wasn't true to me. So then I had to write electrification can trigger. And that brought me to the next item on the list. I was like, okay, then if it's not, this is not enough. It's clearly not enough for me. I want to transform that can trigger to triggers. And so I want to observe it. I just want to go. And it took me a few weeks after I wrote this to talk with my tutor in Berlin and be like, I think I'm quitting. <laughs> I want to start 2017 with a new experience. I had no job offer, no nothing, but I just wanted to go somewhere. And of course, Africa was ranking very high on my bucket list. So then I came across Diverge East Africa. And in this um, experience, I was looking for four things in the company I was joining. First, they needed to be operational. So I didn't want to go there and see something that was not proven. I wanted to see up and running operations. Second thing is I wanted to go for a market-based approach. And then third, I wanted to be with a company that is close to their customers and can measure those impacts. And fourth, I want to go to the field. I don't want to be stuck in a desk in Dar es Salaam and not being able to, to again, be there myself. Devergy took, like, ticked all these boxes. So I was like, OK, I'm going. I just uh, took the offer in the end of the year, and one month later, I was shipped to, to Tanzania. And, um, 
And basically what Devergy told me was like, okay, we are in a very crucial time of our company. We have a certain amount of villages. Some of them perform very well, some of them performs kind of okay, and some of them performs very bad. And the way we have been selecting our villages is pretty much empirical. We take a bus, we go around, we see a need. How big is the village, how many people? Let's go. And of course, <laughs> we are all engineers, and when I heard this, I was like, oh my god, do you actually do this? And, I was like, and they were like, can you do better? Can you develop us a methodology and streamline all our data collection to find the right places we need to go? Because we are a social enterprise. We reinvest and we finance all the capex of the installation, but we need to keep our operations running. And I was like, okay, I think I can do that. Had no clue. No clue at all. But I was like, yeah, I can develop a methodology. This is what I've been doing. That's my expertise. So just give me some time, probably one month, and I will come up with something. But I want to go on the field. They were like, okay, 60% on the field, 40% on the desk. I was fine with that. So basically, my task was uh, to look at a village um, and being able, first of all, from the desk point of view, to get all the data that I could retrieve in order to minimize the error of visiting wrong villages. So I was looking into database, I was talking with a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of them, both from grid providers and other engineers that they do mini-grid operations. So I developed a sort of a methodology that from a GIS mapping, I could pr pretty much tell, okay, this area looks interesting. And uh, from different things, so proximity to main roads, of course, if you have a main road, it means that people go there. And if people go there, it means that they are exposed. And most of the times, they have already electricity from sources like diesel generators or battery swapping or other very, very expensive sources. So there's a market. And um, so this was it. And I was very comfortable with this because, you know, never used GIS before, never been in Tanzania, don't speak Swahili, but, you know, I made my way around it because I can always work with a software. <laughs> the real challenge started when I found myself in this position, in which I was sitting in a chair and I couldn't do anything. <laughs> because in the end, I was just, I mean, I was preparing everything, you know, but it, it wasn't my place. It wasn't my place to actually ask the questions. Um, so, uh, and here they come the takeaways, right? The, the center of this presentation. You don't have to have a plan B. You have to have a plan B, C, D. And you have to be like always having these gaps in your schedule, as we call them, when in, just in case Tanzania happens, just in case things go south, just have a gap. And that was very tough for me because I, was, I wanted really to do always more and uh, to fill my schedule as much as I could. And everybody was telling me every day, you need to, besides your work, you need to have one thing that you want to do. Because you cannot go groceries and then go to the tailor. You can do one. <laughs> not, it's not going to happen that you do both, because one of the two is not going to go well. Just take your time, do one thing per day. And that really helped me. I had a lot of people to talk to. Uh, a lot of things that I wrote also helped me looking back. And I would have loved to keep these takeaways, these three things, observation, communication, flexibility. But because it was such a good number, like three, such a good number, everybody would remember that. But no, <laughs> all these thing, three things were draining energy for me. So I needed a fourth thing to keep up the energy and to change things. And I learned that, uh, odd enough, dealing with Tanesco. Tanesco is the grid supplier in Tanzania. Messy, as messy as it can be. Uh, the right hand doesn't know what the left hand is doing and very, very messy, but you cannot do anything if you don't know if this village is going to be electrified in the next two years because you cannot compete with the grid, with any technology in Tanzania. It's just heavily subsidized. So I decided more and more, I talked to my boss after a few weeks that I was there, I was like, I'm going to have a monthly meeting with them. I just want to do this. Just come with me to the first to introduce me and it's going to be fine. It was a Thursday, we had a meeting 9 a.m., show up there, um, we waited three hours and a half, four hours, called the guy five times, ten times. Yeah, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm coming. Never showed up. When can we come? Please. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Went there again, 9 a.m., five hours, six hours, not showing up. 
We waited there and we called him so many times that in the end he showed up. <laughs> we had a half an hour meeting in English, which was already a big thing, and a very productive meeting. Amazing. He introduced me all the right people, and he, we scheduled all the meetings from there onwards. I was so happy. Like, people that know me in this room probably know that I was like jumping, smiling, so happy, hugging my boss. And, and he looked at me and was like, stop there. Don't do that. And I was like, come on, like, we need to celebrate. Let's go get a beer. And he's like, okay, we celebrate now, because he's celebrating, it's very important, but just enjoy 40% of that and store the rest for all those days in which you're going to wait six hours in their office and they're not going to show up. Because things are going to go bad. You just need a backup. You need this backup and this joy and treasure all the celebrations that you can get. So this was very important for me, and that's what kept me going, because a lot of things went badly. A lot of situations were not as I they were supposed to be. And also coming back here, there's still two things that I keep with me, and they still feel that 60%, and I will keep it as long as I can. And the first one is the uh, electrification of one of the first villages I scouted. I went there, I saw the need, I saw the village, I came back and I talked to my boss and I was like, let's go, let's electrify tomorrow. Like, this is the perfect village, besides the fact that it was beautiful. But I was like, let's go, let's go, let's do it. This was March, in April we electrified it, and in May I went. And we were installing some new customer, that's my colleague Axon, and uh, and it was impressive how much it changed. <laughs> how many things changed in the span of like two months. And uh, it, not so many people have took the system in first place. So I was also very finding very funny how much the impact was for the few system that we, we installed there. And the funniest one was this guy in the picture. He's in front of a shop that we electrified, but that's not his shop. But he was like, can, we, can you please take a picture of me in front of this shop? And I was like, why are you so excited? Because he's like, he goes like, um, it's because now I have the choice. Now, whenever I, have, I think I have enough money to do this, I will do it. I don't have to wait for Tanesco to electri electrify me in 10 years. I can do it tomorrow if I want. I know where to find you. I have your sales agent, your maintenance people here. You're very close to me. I see your guys every day. So for him, that was a revolution. And that was already like a big thing. For other people, it was being able to walk at night in the village. For other people, it was a lot of other things. But, you know, some, some things I would have never expected. And the other main thing that kept me going was something that we've done the last month I was there, that also I would have never expected had that impact. We installed that first DC fridge powered by solar power in the south of Tanzania, as far as we know. And it was such a big event. The whole village was there. Everybody was so excited to get their cold sodas. And I will never forget the face of the first guy who got one. He got it. He looked at it. And he started rubbing it over his face. He was just so happy. He looked at me and he just said, Asante sana. Thank you very much. Like, it was just, and I was like, but that's a soda. You should not be that excited for a soda. But you can store your meat. You can store, no, 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 the soda. But I, I was, I, that was like an impact. I don't know if it's this positive or negative, but it was an impact. I was seeing things. So, um, so then I did again the list of the things that I know to be true. And I did it that evening because I found it funny. I wanted to see the difference. And certain things didn't change. My family and friends still love me, even if I'm always away and I make them worried sick about myself. I still love photography. I still think that climate change is real, and now I see it even more after seeing how it impacts agriculture in Tanzania. I'm still overexcitable. <laughs> I mean, Tanzania didn't change that. And in, but I think what I learned is that me always asking for more um, sometimes is not good, because anything that you take, observing and learning, takes a lot of effort. And sometimes you're just so fed up. It's just too much. And it's OK. I, I started being OK with being fed up. That was a very important thing that I knew to be true to myself. And then also this thing that I was mentioning. So giving the choice of being electrified is already an impact in itself. Um, that was literally one of the most mind-blowing things that I've learned. And then I know I'm not done. I'm back. I'm in Europe. I live in the Netherlands now. But <laughs> you can bet now and we can bet it together that I'm going to go back. I just need some time to process the experience and to find, again, 
a different challenge, a different, a different place probably also, a different country. And then <laughs> side effect of field works. Like field works is exhausting. And you, as you can see in this picture, I had 10 kids chasing me everywhere, trying to pull my hair, trying to get my stuff. And uh, they were just playing with me. They were just so excited to see a muzungu. Uh, but I was so happy. I've never been that mindful in my whole life because I just couldn't do half of the things that I normally do. So I just had a lot of time and I really appreciated it. So in general, as a conclusion, uh, I guess I, from my main takeaway is my main takeaway was like, I was perfectly right that day that I quit because I was like, I love what I'm doing in Berlin, but that's not my dream. And I follow my dream and I went in a very, very remote place and I did a lot of probably very dangerous things, but I, I just wanna maybe empower people in the sense that if you really think that this is something that you would like to do, don't be afraid, don't say that I, you cannot do it. I told this to myself all the time, and that I didn't have the skills, that I was like not ready or something, but at a certain point, you just need to go and figure it out. It might also be that you come back and you're not excited as I am, and you're like, I'm done, I don't wanna, I don't wanna do it anymore, but just do it, just go see field work. It doesn't have to be Africa, it doesn't have to be India, it doesn't have to be anywhere. But take your work and see if it's true to you. If what you're doing is speaking to yourself and is like giving you something that you know to be true, and if it's not, then start asking your question and try to figure out how to iterate this in yourself and try to make it true to you. So that's it. Thank you. <laughs>